In this video, we're going to have a look at how to build this interactive shopping page. So if we have a look at the page, then on the left hand side, we have a plugin that is free for filtering. And on the right hand side, we use the original WooCommerce output. And you'll see here that in a previous video, I showed you how you could insert the um, quantity into the archive page. So this is still pulling in the original WooCommerce layout. And then, of course, we have this filtering system here on the left. So if I was to click on hoodies, then, of course, the number of hoodies would uh, be displayed. If I then cleared the hoodies uh, and you'll see that as I change through the different options here, you'll see that the filter options also change. So now blue is available in hoodies and T-shirts. And these are the sizes. If I select a size then you'll see that my options again change based on the size that I've selected. So this is a nice interactive um, filtering system and it works with WooCommerce um, in its original state. So it's not an Ajax powered interface that we have. So it does allow you to hook in with um, other plugins and standard WooCommerce hooks into your layout. The other thing here that also works, I'll just show you quickly, is you have the search option. And when you search, of course, then it um, just brings back depending on the search. And then, of course, you have this slider here for pricing. And as you move it, so you can see the number of options that are available then also change. So, yeah, that works really well. And you can basically browse your entire shop then from one page. If you want to head over into a category, though. So let me go into clothing. Let's go into, let's say, hoodies. Then you'll see that the filter options remain, but they apply to the category that I'm in. You'll also notice here that this um, page title changes depending on the category that I'm in. So if I'm in T-shirts, it'll of course change to T-shirts. But on the shop page, you'll see that it just says all products. So what I'll do is I'm going to also then show you how you can have this um, title that then conditionally displays depending on what you're looking at so that's pretty much the um the layout that we're going to build and then that is the filtering system uh, and one last thing then we also have a paging system which is added and of course you can page through the various products and i've set it up specifically with only two rows of products so that you could see how the pagination works then in terms of the top of the page here if i um, I see that I qualify for free shipping, so let me remove the sunglasses. And if I was to add this long sleeve tee, then you'll see that uh, $35 to go. And if we have a look, you'll see that that is accurate. If I add another 20, now I have 15 to go. And let's add one more item here for 25. And that'll now. Uh, oops, wrong button. I need to add the add to cart. And there you see now, yay, you get free shipping. So that's pretty much then um, how this works. And I will then show you how to set this up. As we remove items from the cart, you'll also notice that that value changes. And then we're back to $60 to go. So we have now um, a really nice interactive um, shopping experience. So there were a couple of challenges to building this and some of you may be aware of these. So what I'm going to do first of all is remove the shop. And then what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to remove these titles and then I'll just show you how we um, put those back. So right um, with that done. And then what I'll also do now is um, well, I'm not going to remove the short code because that's just a short code straight out of a plugin. So let's go and have a look at the plugins then that we used. I'm going to save this now. And when I head over to my default shop page, um, let's just go to shop. You'll see that we have the filter system, but there's nothing to see. And if I go to, say, the music page, there's nothing to see. So we've removed that. And I've also um, then going to show you here quickly the plugin that I've used here. So the plugin that we've used here is called Pofoli. And I'll just open that in a new tab. And we'll go here to Pofoli WooCommerce Product Filters. This is the free version. 
and this is the plugin that you're looking for um, and it works really well and it has a lot of um, great features in the free version and of course they also then have a pro version of the plugin so um, to show you maybe we'll just have a look at that quickly to show you how it works so basically what you have are two parts of this plugin the one is the the um, menu filter page so in the or filter menu page and in that filter menu now you can add the different filters that you've created you can also have more than one um, menu filter and that just allows you then maybe if you wanted to have uh, say the categories across the top of the page and then the size and the color down the left hand side then you can create a, um, you know a menu with the categories at the top and then the other variations down the left and they will work together and interact because they're on the WooCommerce archive page. The other thing then to show you here would be the filter blocks. So when it comes to filter blocks you'll see filter by size, by color, by category and this is where you set up the various filter blocks. So I'm going to add a filter block here and I'll just show you how quickly this works. I'm going to call this horizontal categories um i'd like to just copy paste it in here then on the right hand side here you'll see filter by taxonomy and i'm just going to leave it on filter by taxonomy i'm going to leave it here on product categories but you can see that you can do it by product tags product color product size um here the filter for price review and name so the filter by name is the search option and the search by price is the price slider, and I didn't use the review filter. Um, right, so there we said for products, it now asks you what terms to add. So I'm going to add all the terms. Right, we've added all the terms, and the show type, you have a choice then of button, checkbox, select, or color swatches. Um, I'm going to go with just a standard button. Uh, if you want to make changes to any of those, this is where you can add a new label or a tooltip um, and then further down here you know order by name slug id if you want to change the order and the order type ascending or descending yes it's good to show the count allow multiple selection sure why not uh, let's go with all and display type here i'm going to change that to horizontal and um yeah also want to show a clear button we're not going to show as toggle and there's no need for a view more so yeah that's pretty much all that we need to do there and then you'll see now that you create your menu so you go over to your filter menu and let's add a filter menu and i'm going to add this one as top horizontal and there's the short code for this menu and then i have a look here for the various filter blocks that i've created and the only one I want is this horizontal categories. Um, then it asks yeah, if you want to use a button to filter. And I prefer that when you click on the selection, it filters. So we won't enable that. And then um, we're not using a modal. So we won't enable that to show up in a modal. And then we publish. So that's all that you have to do to create your, um, your filter. And we'll come back to that later and insert that on the page the next thing that of course that we need to go and have a look at then is how to pull in the products here into the area that we want them to display now one of the things that you may or may not know is i can add here i can go to product um, and i can look here for the product list so uh, let's just have a look here products tab uh, let's just do products that's going to be a bit quicker and we'll just look here for here we are so we have this products icon here and you can add that i can save that i'll head over to the website and what you'll notice now is that yes i've added the products it looks great um, the problem though is that i can't filter the results oh i can filter the results okay so the results do filter um 
the issue, well, then there's two ways to do this. The one way is to pull in the just that products um, as, as you saw me pull it into the page, and then you can filter quite clearly then. You can filter, or maybe not so accurate. So here you'll see where the issue lies is here when it comes to filtering by the um, variations you're starting to get some really strange results so i should just have three green items and no it's not working so the filter does work by the looks of things when it comes to the category so that's what surprised me when i thought it was working is right you can pull up the hoodies but i can't then filter um, further by color so it's not working on all the variations and the categories um, that you would like the other thing that you'll notice um, um, if i remember correctly the price slider did work yeah so the price slider works and the categories work but the filter by the um, variations doesn't work um, if we head over here to clothing you'll see that i have it here on clothing but i'm still picking up sunglasses and a cap and a and the accessories as well and if i say went over to decor okay decor working okay clothing includes the accessories t-shirts and the hoodies so that's right and the categories is working by page as well so the only thing that's not working then is this um the variation filters which is something i'd like to have working right so to do that and then also the other thing is that the the woocommerce hooks the default woocommerce hooks that you can use then to um, insert content on the page and change things um, they're not working as well so that would mean that if you installed a plugin and it did hook into the layout it would no longer hook into the standard layout and um, that's just the way that i prefer to work so what i'm going to do then is remove this products section because that's clearly not going to be the solution so head over here and i'm going to delete that right just uh just the product section right so we delete the products and save and then head over refresh and that should be gone right so now what we're going to do is create a function we could install the code directly here but i prefer to work then um, in a code snippet because if we then uh, change the plugin we're going to lose um, this code as well so uh, what i'm going to do is save changes and deactivate and then we'll add new and what we'll do is we'll just create that quickly so this will be the woocommerce um, archive page and then we need to create a function um, give your function a unique name so woocommerce archive right and there we have just the basics and uh, we can save those changes everything should still be working as it was right so let's get started then on that function so first thing that we want to do now is we're going to be inserting this function on the shop page so we are already in a a product loop so when we build out our function we don't have to tell wordpress to go and look for products so normally you'd create a query and you'd say uh, something along the lines of uh, you know post type um uh, post per page etc 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 but we don't need to do that because we're in a product loop so i'm just going to go ahead and just say if and then here um if have the standard um loop if have posts um and then we're going to go um while have posts um and then of course the post 
Right, so that's all that we need to do. And um, right, so with that done, um, that's the very basic way then to output post information. And I'm going to save changes and activate. Now, what we haven't told it um, to do is what to output. So, um, and I could just do something like um, the title and save. And then what I'm going to do is output this in the website. So I copy the name of my function, head over um, to the area I want to work in. And I've just added a code block. And then what we do is we just put in the PHP. And we put in the name of the function. And we can... There you go. So there you can already see the title coming through. And you'll see that it's all um, clothing. So if I save that, head over to the website, refresh, you'll see there's the name of the products. And if I selected a product here, you'll probably find that the filter will work. And it's just bringing back the name of that one product. So we know that that's working. And if I go to music, for example, there we have the two music products. So we know that we're in the right loop and we're outputting the right information. So that's great. The next thing that we want to do is, now that we know that our snippet is working, we want to just output, instead of the title, we want to output the um, the products uh, from WooCommerce. Now, we don't need to now go and create this massive um, piece of code to get the post title, the image, um, all those things. What we're going to do is we're going to access a WooCommerce function, and that is WooCommerce underscore get underscore template uh, template underscore part and we're going to go content and product all right so we're going to do that so there we've got the woocommerce get template part that's great let's save those changes now all I need to do is head over to the website and refresh and let's see what we got. Right, so there we're getting our products and you can see we have this quantity section added. So I know that the hooks that I created previously are working on the page. Um, the information is being filtered and are put in the right way. So that's great, but the formatting is really terrible. So there's another, there's an easy way to fix that. We're not going to go in now and start editing a massive amount of CSS. What we're going to do now is just um, access the right um, code to output um, our, our particular layout. And the layout I'm looking for is four columns. So if I was to look on any other WooCommerce um, enabled website with four com columns, what we'll find is that there is a snippet of code that stipulates the four columns. So I'm going to head over here. And then what I'm going to do is just exit PHP. And then what I'm going to do is just echo out, or well not echo out, or maybe I will just leave that there and just echo out the divs. So it's um, going to be um, echo. Um, right. And the div that we want is for four columns. So if you have a look at the layout within WooCommerce, you will see ul class equals um, products um, and then you'll see columns dash four right so we're just going to output that and then what we'll do is we'll also then um, output the closing um, ul because these products all come through in an ordered list so if we have a look here at this layout you'll see um that the standard layout is this ul uh, is the um li for the ordered list but you'll see there's no ul tag here at the beginning so that's why we're putting in this ul tag to open up that list so what i'm going to do now is just make sure i put it in the right place and then we'll echo and we'll just put the closing tag in right so there we've done that Save, head over to the website, refresh. Now you'll see that we have the 
it's still not working the way that we want. Um, if we have a look now, you'll see there we have the products columns four correctly, and here we have the Allied class, but we're still not getting the right layout. So after having a look in Bricks, I found that there's another um, class that we just need to echo out here, and that is um, one that is related to Bricks. So that was the div, and then the class equals um, right. And the class that we're looking for is the brxe dash WooCommerce dash products div. Right, so and then we just need to close that off. So there we have our div, and then we need to just put in the closing div after that. Then I can hit save. I can head over to the website, refresh, and now we have our four column grid and it looks fantastic and everything's working. Uh, we can check the filtering quickly. So let's go to music and the music is showing. And if I go here to decor, we just get the one result. That's great. Let's go back to the shop. Let's have a look at some of these filters here. So color, right? The color's working. Um, Let's have a look then and see if the size is working. So scroll down. Let's have a look at the one large. And there we have the one large. So great. Our filters are working. The products are working. The next thing though that we want to do is we definitely need some pagination here because we only have eight products. Now the way that I set those eight products is I just popped over here into the customize. I went over to WooCommerce product catalog and just said, four products per row and then two rows and that was just to ensure that we would be forced to use pagination so i'm going to close that and now what we're going to do is add the pagination to the page so what we're going to do now is just use the standard pagination from uh, woocommerce and in order to do that what we need to do is we need to add that pagination but we need to add it before the end of this if have posts so the if have posts ends there. So we need to add this before that and not outside the if have posts. So let's echo. And what I'm first going to do then is just echo out the um, the style sheet uh, or the, the reference to the um, navigation. So it's the nav. And then it's um, class equals. And the class we're going to use is WooCommerce pagination. That's pagination. Right, so there we have the WooCommerce pagination um, opening. And let's echo the closing nav. Right, so there we have the closing nav. And now what we need to do is get the pagination. And that's done just as easily. And to do that, we're just going to echo and paginate underscore links right so there we echo out the paginate links and we save the changes head over to the website refresh and um, ah let me just have a look and see where i made my mistake there um, let's have a look and it's not paginate link it's paginate links and now when I refresh, there we have the pagination. Now the pagination's not going to look like this straight off the bat. So if I head over to customize and I go to my custom CSS or additional CSS here, you'll see that you will need to do a couple of changes. So to show you what that looks out of the box, it's going to look like that, which is you know something you might have seen before. And then with just a couple of lines of styling here. And basically, um, if you look here, we target the page numbers. Then we target the current number. And then WooCommerce pagination. And that's about it. That's all we need to do to get um, the styling right on those buttons. So, um, yeah, quite easy to do. Um, 
and then we have our pagination so we have our pagination but does it work so let's test that so let's go to page two page three yep that's working previous that's working next that's working so all we've done now is gone along to woocommerce and said please put your pagination in over here so once again didn't have to create anything there just putting in their custom function right so that's done so now we have um, the main shop page and you can go to clothing but now you want to make sure that your customer isn't confused because now he's on clothing and suddenly something's missing here on the left hand side so in a similar way if i went to music for example i'd be thinking where's those clothes so in order to avoid the confusion we're just going to add a title at the top of the page so to do that we're going to add two titles so let me go over to here and now you'll also see that um ah, if i just uh, refresh the code we kind of get a, an output now the output you're going to get this is about as good as it's going to get um inside bricks right now what we're going to do is just add um, a title and i prefer to add it above the column with the products if we center it here sometimes it looks a bit odd so in the columns here i'm going to add a um a i'm going to add a uh, a heading and then i'm also going to add a title so the heading is just going to be the standard heading that we're going to use and that's going to be um, all products um, all products so the customer knows they're looking at all products and then i'm going to add a title um, and that's going to be the post title so um, essentially what we want to do now if i save that let's head over here so when i refresh you'll see that we have um, the products appears so that's the title but we want this to say all products and if i go to say music um, then i wanted to say music now the reason why i separated out is because if i'm on the main shop page and i click on music then it says music here but i'm not actually in the music section um, and i know what i'm looking at because i have this here and i'll so for me, it just made logical sense to let the customer know you're on the all products page. You can browse all products or you're in the music archive and you can only browse music. So in order to make that work, we head over here. Now we just need to add a condition um, as to when to show. So, uh, right, so let's go um, to the conditions now and um, let's add a condition. So the condition we want to do on the first one is to show if if it's not uh, in a product category or archive, we're going to show all products. So what we need to do now is look for, um, it's not a post. Um, so we're going to look for dynamic data. If I remember correctly, dynamic data, and we're going to set that for, um, post um, author site um, now uh, let's see um, was it under the woocommerce so here we're getting to the woocommerce so um Uh, product name uh, not in that section so uh, product categories there we have it so I'm going to say pot product categories is equal to not a product category so it mustn't be a product category so now if i go to bricks and i refresh and i go to shop it shouldn't be showing um,
let's just have another look at that so over to music right there you have it i hadn't saved the page so basically now what happens is that if i'm on the shop page we have all products if i'm in the um, clothing we see clothing then i'm going to go back to bricks and now i'm going to apply the opposite so um i'm going to do the opposite now for the post title so <clears throat> add condition um we know it's dynamic data we know we're looking for the product oops not there we're looking for product categories and we're going to say is not equal to no value we'll save that and now when we um, refresh we'll see that clothing stays and on the shop page we just have all products so that's the great thing nice quick easy condition there and now we just want to build up some space so we there are two ways of doing it the one is to add padding to both items or uh, i think what i'm going to do in this case is just add a div um, and in that div we'll add some spacing so style let's make the padding 20 pixels all round right and then i'm just going to pop the heading in and then i'm also going to pop in the post title and we'll save that and that'll just create a little bit of space at, uh, it should create a bit of space at the top um that div does have the padding and okay so all products um right so for some reason the padding in the div um, isn't working um, I'm not sure why um, it's definitely a div display as a block let's display it as flex perhaps um, we'll do a column and uh, let's set the width then to 100% um let's go back and we'll just right so let's see if just converting that to a flex box um still not working um right so for some reason um and i don't know why okay so that that div is just not going to um, um take on my styling here so let's see if a margin works um right so now we've saved that right and the margin won't work so that nothing wants to work um with this div and with these items in the div um let's try adding in the padding to the individual item see if that works right so we've added it now to the individual item so here in the back end you can see i've got massive issues going on there with the styling but on the front end um it just will not apply that style okay well um then there's no point then in using the div because it's not going to do anything so i'm going to move those items out and delete that div um and we have the items on their own head over and still nothing so i I'm a little bit confused about why the styling on these individual items um, is not working and it also didn't work with a div. Um, let's try something else. Um, uh, maybe we can, let's see what we've got. Can we, no, can't. let's go. 
Um, so we've got a container, a block, or a div. So I don't know if a container might work. Uh, let's put the headings in the container. Um, let's go to the container. Let's centralize everything back to the style. Um, in the container, let's give the container some padding. Let's refresh. No. So I, I'm out of options here. I've tried a container. I've tried a div. Um, right, so I can remove that. Okay, so for some reason, um, um, nothing's working when it comes to applying the styles for the all products and it simply won't apply the um, the padding or the margin that I've allocated so um, yeah let's move on right the next thing we're going to do then is um, you remember we created this horizontal nav menu in our filter we used the, we created the filter block then we created this filter menu and I'll just show you then how to put that on the page every filter menu has a short code so and a little copy icon here so we can just copy that and then I'm going to head over into bricks and then below the top um, if we have a look here this column here we have the title and the heading and then below that I'm going to add a short code so let's go to content let's paste in the short code let's um, save that let's head over and there you'll see now that we have these categories at the top of the page so decor and it filters it's clear right so what i also then think that i'm going to do is i don't want that horizontal categories heading there so filter menus um, now there are two ways to get to your block so I can do it by going into the menu and then we see there's horizontal categories select that and I don't want that displaying on the page so update and um, we don't want that title on our page um, uh, account and um, selection display name horizontal um, I'm not seeing anywhere here where I can uh, choose not to show the name so maybe what I'm going to do then is I'll just use a bit of CSS to style it out and also I would like this moved into the center so I'm going to head over here so there's that short code and what I'm going to do then is um, let's add a div and I'll move that up here and then we'll put the um, oh, let's move that down wrong one so we'll put that above the code and then we'll drop the short code in and then that div we will uh, it might already be centered. Let's have a look. Right, so there we have our categories across the top. And I think what I'm going to do here is um, just get that title. And then I will just um, head over here, CSS, and then we'll just uh, display none right and we'll publish that right so now we've got um, our accessories across the top we don't need that on the left hand side as well so what we'll do then is we'll go to our filter menus we'll go to the um, main shop and we look for the category we say minus just updates the list of what's available nice and quickly head over to the website refresh and the accessories or this 
uh, menu here because as you go through to the various pages the menu of course changes according to the categories that are available so here for example we just have accessories clothing um, because we're in the um, clothing section so we only have access to these um, options now what you'll notice here is that clothing in this indicator shows one and that's because only one of these items is selected as clothing and accessories hoodies and t-shirts are um, subcategories to the main category of clothing so if, if you want to correct this pagination um, this number the best way to do that is to make sure that the parent category and the child category are clicked so if if it's a hoodie you click hoodies and clothing t-shirts and clothing accessories and clothing and if you do it that way then clothing will be the total then of all three categories otherwise at the moment clothing technically just has one item in it um, yeah so that's then uh, how we have the uh, filter system then working at the top of the page and as you go into each category you're only allowed to select then these sub options that are available for that category but now you know you're in music so all that this will do is confirm that you're in that category and then of course if there are subcategories like you have here then it would then show the subcategories but all within that um, clothing range so yeah that's working really great the pagination's working the shop's working um, sliders working so yeah that's how you can then create your own um, interactive shop with these interactive filters and the other nice thing about this Pofilly plugin is that after installation you'll notice that it appears right at the top just under the bricks uh, plugin so you have direct access right at the top of the page well that's how you can um, create this page so remember it was the first we created the um, snippet that pulled in the uh, WooCommerce product information which was that little bit of code and then that's the only code that we used and then that was then displayed on the page using a code block And all it does was all it does is display the information from that function, and then we added in the various items and apply conditions to products and all products so that the headings and the titles show on the right page. Well, that wraps up this video. Thank you for watching.